Liz Adal, MM Connect TV, and I'm standing at the Irish Open in City West Hotel with the event promoter, Roy Baker. Roy, how are you? A little tired with the storm, <laughs> storm Norman or storm the beast from the east or storm whatever. Um, we're tired, but we got away yeah. with it. Disappointing, you know, a big weekend and a lot of competitors couldn't make it for the weather. Yeah, it's, it's funny, it's a, it's a disappointment, but then inspired. So we had 3,847 registrations from 36 countries. Uh, we ended up with about 1,560 from 21 countries. Uh, so, yeah, we lost about 60% of our participants. But if you go out in the world of kickboxing, that number of participants is, is usually around the same size of all the other cups, but just it's just an extraordinary event. So, a disappointing but inspired. 1,600 people competed here. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. I mean, obviously, no one, want, no one can predict the weather and no one wants that on the weekend of, of you know their event. But let's look at the positives. A phenomenal amount of competitors that were due to come here this weekend and, and fantastic for Ireland and putting it on the map. Yeah, I mean, in the world of kickboxing in Waco, we're really on the map. I mean, we're always number three, number two, number four in the world for a small country. Yeah. So we're here. Um, the difficulty we have is that we have to stay relevant. Um, you've got a lot of other sports out there, combat sports, non-combat sports. And when you're a major sport there, you've got to keep yourself relevant. Yeah. So is there a plan now going forward? Will we see different um, martial arts come into the Irish Open? Or, or what, what are you thinking? No, we don't want any more people. We, we're, okay. we're already too big. But what we do want to do is, for our sport, we really want to focus on the quality. So the Irish Open uniquely caps itself at 4,000 competitors. Yep. So we won't allow more than 4,000 because two years ago we had more than 4,000 and it broke us. Yep. So it's still calculations, I'm an accountant. Yeah. So we did the numbers <laughs> and we said what we can handle is 4,000 by starting on a Friday at 2 o'clock and we finish up on a Sunday at 8. And that's using 22 areas. Wow. You know, so it's, it's huge. So tell me, how does an accountant get into promoting uh, martial arts events? Uh, I've been involved in karate back in the early 80s because I'm an old man. Um, <laughs> went from karate, went into kickboxing, did full contact kickboxing for a number of years, then went into point fighting. Um, and I'm president of Kickboxing Ireland, I'm president of Waco Europe and vice president of the World Body. So it's a big part of my life, but as a volunteer. It must make you very proud. I mean, without you, arguably, this wouldn't be going ahead, you know? No, I'm only one person. <laughs> I've got about 170 volunteers here. I've had 126 referees travel from all over the world at their own expense. So everybody keeps saying, wow, boy, well, fantastic. I'm only a small cog in it. Yeah. It's the people out here that are still working while I'm interviewing you. <laughs> but listen, I mean, let's get real for a minute. You have almost 200 people working voluntarily to make this happen. A huge event supporting Irish, Irish competitors, Irish talent and international talent. Where do we stop the volunteering and how do we progress and make this you know a proper entity uh, you know it's sport in Ireland I'm, I'm in with John Tracy last week talking about things so sport in Ireland is fundamentally reliant on volunteers yep. uh, and, and I think it should remain that way when a sport becomes professional in my opinion yep. it loses some of its heart okay so sport in Ireland needs to remain at a volunteer level because that's where the grassroots are. Where, when you take care of the kids at the lower levels, you'll naturally grow talent up into the higher levels. Too many people suddenly always focus on the elite. For us in Kickboxing Ireland, we always nurture. It's all about the nurture and development and then everything else will take care of itself. And speaking of nurturing the talent, obviously you've seen a lot of our best guys now start out and start competing. What is it like for you as a promoter to see them you know, on your stage as kids and then progress onto the professional ranks and, and get the, the recognition and the accolades that they deserve? Well, a lot of our guys are getting pulled over to your area <laughs> in MMA, as you all know. So um, it, it's, it's great, but again, the difficulty for kickboxing, we need to remain relevant. MMA yeah. is challenging us, boxing is challenging us, we are challenging them. So it's a world of really contributing. And one big thing about the Irish Open, why I started 28 years ago was, I was lucky to win a number of world titles. Yeah. But I always had to travel. So I and others wanted to build something in Ireland that we didn't have to travel, because I was fed up traveling. Yeah. So we built this up and then we became a patron of the ISPCC, the charity we run this for. And then over time, it's built and built and built and now it's a monster. Yeah. Monster. Absolutely is. Well, listen, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And congratulations for another fantastic event. And hopefully, we'll be back again next year. Thank you. And don't get caught in the snow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Cheers. <laughs>